Ooh, what's up guys? Playing chess rivals with share. 10 minutes per side. Increment 10 seconds per side. So just got to create the game. Send in the link. Get going. So looks like I'm white. I'm wondering if I should start to think about a strategy already. I don't have any new openings since I played them last, so probably not just normal game. And you can't see here, I'll try to scroll, no, not working, but I've got 16 wins against 19 losses for him, so I'm trying to get back up and even it out. We'll play the standard opening for me. Let's see what happens. This time he knows I'm streaming, so hopefully he like blunders because he's nervous or something. He's playing this flank opening, opening, which I don't normally know what to do against, so I just take the center. I need to learn what you're supposed to do against these. I don't think there's a, usually a clear plan because Black stays so flexible that they have many options open for them, so it really just depends on how the game develops. But taking the center is a classical way to play. Principled, as they say, shouldn't be a bad idea. And the game begins. I um, hope you guys are ready for New Year's Eve coming up tomorrow. Um, Cher's going for a dark squared setup, it looks like, with that move. And I think what I'm going to do against it is try to solidify my dark squares. This sort of comes at the expense of closing in the knight potentially, but it really just depends on what happens. I definitely want to develop the dark squared bishop before the knight. That's interesting. He's trying to prevent my dark squared bishop from developing to a nice square. So another option is to slowly bring the knight from b1 to d2 to b3. I'm not sure what it's doing over there though. And there's the option is to ignore my queen side development and just go with the king side. Um, or I could just play it slow and prevent his bishop from coming to g4. You know, maybe I'll do that. I have slightly more space in the center. It's debatable, but perhaps h6 is a weakening move. We'll see how the game develops. So here, he attacks my e-pawn, so I should probably defend it. First thing that comes to mind is d3. Um, he also prepares to castle. That b1 to h7 diagonal is usually a good square for the light squared bishop, so I don't see any downsides. I'll probably just castle after that. I don't really see anything else worth thinking about, so I'm just going to make that move. I have to keep in mind that this bishop might become undefended and therefore need to worry about this d-pawn capturing and opening up my undefended bishop. Castles. This could be a good time to do that knight and maneuver, yet it's still, still a little unsure about what it would be doing. Also could be a good time to stay flexible. Castle myself. It 
that's probably a good idea because I can probably get this rook to overprotect the e-pawn. The e-pawn is the weakest pawn for me on the board because it's not currently protected by a pawn. But it's also extended, so it could be doing some damage later. Both of our queen sides are undeveloped, so Cher goes ahead and Fanchetto's prepares the Fanchetto, the light squared bishop. Makes sense. Would also attack the e pawn. Hmm. It does weaken that one square, c6. But I don't have a good way to get there yet. I feel like I should develop some pieces. Wonder if C if E three is a good square for my dark squared bishop. It does leave the that would leave the E pawn unprotected, so maybe just still flexible. E1. Well, you know what I can do? I can do um, bishop to f4. So, yeah. But no threats with that move, so it's okay. I'm going to do this maneuver I was thinking about. It needs to get developed. Might be a good diagonal for it. It somewhat discourages uh, e-pawn push for share, so I like that. Also, now I can push my e-pawn and then take with the bishop. That sounds good. So now it's sort of become a fight over this square. I could take it if I want it, though. Do I want to open things up? It's probably not a bad idea. Let's see. Pawn e5. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Seems good. If I hold off, he can actually do d4 himself. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. It might be early, but I'm not sure. If we do end up trading the knights, then it could probably make sense for me to bring the other knight and replace the current knight. So that would be b1 to d2, d2 to f3. It's time consuming, but it's a good place for the knight, and that other knight's kind of superfluous, superfluous right now. I need to make sure I don't get problems on this long light square diagonal, though. Yeah, so against that move, I was thinking I could just retreat. My one defender too short takes, 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 takes. No, I think I have it covered. Let's try that again. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Bishop takes. I have plenty of defenders. I'm 
now that knight's actually pretty close to being trapped, isn't it? If I can just go g4. I can take down the knight. It doesn't work now, though. So I have two options. Oh, I see. It's possible if, when all is said is done that he gets the move knight f4 in. Am I too really scared about that? I don't think so. Mm. Actually, yeah, it's annoying. So I think I want to end with the pawn. No, I want to keep the bishop. The thing about f4, as you can see now, is that it would be a double attack on that g2 square. Also, the f5 square is available for use for me now, because if he takes a piece there, then his knight will be unprotected, and I could take with my queen. Good to keep in mind. So if he takes my knight with his knight, I probably want to take with the pawn. As weird as it seems. Just to keep his knight out of the game. It also re-threatens g4. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Is there anything weird that's going to happen? I mean, my queen's under fire. So my rook needs to stay where it is. But it can definitely stay where it is. It's going to be a weird game if I manage to trap this knight because it's going to leave my king pretty wide open. See, this is why it would have been nice to develop my knight earlier, because now it's blocking my other rook from protecting my queen. Yeah, he sees what's going on. It still doesn't mean that g4 is a bad move, because it still prevents, well, it probably is. <clears throat> Lots of tactics here. It's a good game. Hmm. So if not G4, what's the plan? I would love to trade bishops with him, but I don't see how that's going to happen. Maybe with a move like <clears throat> e2. So what does he want to do? All his pieces are in decent position. He wants to get rid of my e-pawn. Yeah, let's do this. This gets out of a pin. <clears throat> it prepares basically bishop e4. <clears throat> hmm. Stopping the 
pawn from moving forward, but that's fine. <clears throat> Maybe now would be a good time to get my knight in the game. He's got no threats. Any plans for him? Well, it's going to take a few moves, so I think I can move slowly. I'll do that maneuver I was talking about earlier. B1, D2, then D2, F3. It'll be another protector on this e-pawn as well. I guess I don't have to worry about his knight because how is it ever going to get in the game anyways? So the plan is knight f3, the bishop e4, and eventually rook d1. I thought he might try this. But it's okay. I mean, it's kind of scary for his queen to be there, but if I just do f3 anyways, he has to move. The queen has no good squares. I get that other move in anyways. Unless I'm missing something. We'll find out. It's an interesting position. That doesn't work, does it? No. There's no way that works. Queen takes, take the queen, take the queen. There's two options. There's take the queen, take the queen, take the knight, take the knight. And he has doubled pawns. Yeah, that should be better, right? I guess he has the bishop. Oh, we both have the bishop pairs. And we've got this weird old pawn blocking both of our dark squared bishops. So I suppose it's a pretty... And I get the d file. get the d-file. I should probably take the d-file. I'm running out of time too, so I should play faster at this point. I hope that I can eventually take advantage of that pawn. I could like go for a rook lift and try to win that doubled pawn, but it would take a long time. He has no good way to defend it either. I don't know if it's as important. Let's see. So, rook d3, rook d8, rook d1, take, take. It's at least equal for me, probably slightly better. <clears throat> we 
we're gonna do some moves. Interesting. But, oh, so he's threatening the, that pawn, I see. It doesn't work though, right? <clears throat> because I can just go bishop f3, bishop f3, bishop takes, pawn, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes, c6, wins the bishop, if he retreats, I take, yeah. <clears throat> oh. I think I want to go for the doubled pawns here. Because I have the I have the defile. So when all is said and done, I can invade right. Yeah. It's still a weird position. <clears throat> but he's pretty stuck. I think I should get my king over to e2 to prevent his rook from coming in once I invade. I mean, I don't know why he hasn't been playing f3. I mean, f6. It's just a move to open up his... I guess he loses a pawn if he does that, that's why. <laughs> because after I take and he takes with the bishop, I get to take c7. So if he just pushes c7 to c5, then he can execute that plan. That's probably the best plan of action for him. If he does that... Do I still go king f1? It's hard to say. Let's see. c4, king f1. F3, pawn takes, bishop takes, yeah, e, e2 all the same, even though there's less things to attack for me, it's still a more active rook than his. So it should be good. But yeah, 2016 is coming to a close. I hope you guys are all excited for the new year. I definitely am. I don't think there's much more to say about this position. Pretty sleepy right now. I went on a six mile run yesterday and now I'm feeling kind of sleepy. I had a lot of food today. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I'm just gonna centralize the king. what I have. I had some pizza bread. Ooh. I didn't think about that. So if he can get his king over, he protects the defile as well. I do have this weird plan of e2, e7, d4.
You know what? Let's do it. I like it. I've never seen anything like it before. I'm not trapping my rook, am I? It's nice because I kind of have two threats here, because I could go over to the A or G file. I didn't realize that this also means he gets... to use the H file. Hmm. H4, oh, I don't have much time. It's looking like a draw. <clears throat> I feel like I probably had a, a way to win this. Um, I don't know. This might be a lost pawn for me. If he goes... Yeah. I think he needs to do h8. If his rook h8, then my pawn's pinned. So I have to play g2. Or g3, bishop g3. But then if he takes, I have to... take with the rook he takes my rook, and I take his. Wow. I'm just gonna... There's not much time. But I should... I should leave... I should keep him... His... Bishop out of the game. Because I now have an opportunity to get my bishop in the game. He missed a, I think he missed a win there. We'll go over it afterwards. Now I'm up on time though. It's weird. I'm thinking that his rook is kind of out of play. Over there, but I could be wrong. This is really interesting. I wonder why he does that. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
but what about this? That rook's starting to look awfully trapped. I want to move fast, but I want to not blunder, so I need to make sure I'm not blundering each of these moves. I've got a undefended pawn on f4, and then two undefended pawns. Cool. a2. B is defended right now. So let's defend it. It's really the only move, as far as I can tell. So what's the plan now? Probably move the king over. And then trade rooks. Yeah. Then my king's coming over here to this side pretty fast. He has to trade. So I've got lots of time, so I should figure this out. This king can only come in through... This king has no way to come in through the king's side unless he pushes a pawn. Oh no, that can't work. That just loses. Yeah. Cool. Good game up till the end. I think I made a mistake earlier on. And then he made a mistake there at that final move. But it might have been... He might have had to try some weird pawn push to make it work. Good game, he says. Tell him I'm going to do some analysis. Maybe he'll join the analysis. Not sure. But I think it was well played by us for the majority of the beginning portions. So no blunders for quite a while there as far as I could tell. But let's see if I missed anything. So, yep, back to the beginning. <clears throat> this whole flank, I guess it's called the modern defense attack. Where he strives through the dark squares. I don't know if I would have changed anything about the way I played. This move was maybe not necessary. But I don't know what I would have done if not... So one option was something like bishop here, bishop here, pawn. I guess, so this is actually doable because since he fanchettoed the dark squared bishop, this runs obviously into Just telling him. He says he thinks it should have been a draw. I pretty much agree. So that, seeing as this isn't possible, uh, sorry, here, he would have to retreat again. And then I win a tempo. So maybe, maybe h3 really wasn't necessary. I need to remember that. When they fan shadow a bishop, then there's no need to have this h3 or a3 move. So then again, looking back at when I played that, that would have been right here. I should have seen that basically 
the g6 square is taken, so it's light square. The bishop can't use that square. I'm happy with putting my bishop here, all things considered, although it was a little bit dangerous. That queen e2 move later was, I think, good. So we both castle. I think this is all correct. And yeah, no complaints, not too much to analyze. I think this move, if I don't play this move, let me just tell him. He's asking where that one move I was talking about. Right here. 28, I believe 28, h shape. One. So this is, yeah, we'll get to this later though. So, yeah, I choose to break here. If I don't choose to break, what's the option? The other option, I suppose, is to develop this bishop here. This is actually probably fine too. Is there something I was concerned about? I th was I concerned about, probably this is a concern, right? Well, if, yes, because this, 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 then it, my light squared bishop falls. So I'm down a piece. So it's good that I didn't do that. The other option was to retreat this right away. And now if we get that same sequence, then I can go ahead and take and it's protected. But actually it doesn't work, does it? Take, 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 oh it does, wow. Take, 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 check. And this has got to be better for him. There's no doubt. So, yeah, glad I decided to act right then and there. I don't know, there's so many variations to calculate, but I decided that I didn't want... So originally I, I was thinking about this move because I get to keep my pawn structure intact, but then his knight can retreat and his knight's back in the game. And I'm underdeveloped, and I've got a weird square to develop my knight to, so it's going to take a few moves to get re-coordinated, so he probably has a slight advantage here. Sorry, going through this thing for sure. What was I thinking? Then pawn takes. Bishop takes. Bishop takes e5. Right, if we have this, then we get this. Oh, it comes with check, uh, but h4, b takes h4, comes with check. So it's okay, maybe. So anyways, don't want to get into that. So taking with the pawn definitely feels right. He's obviously got troubles. I mean, he has to take a whole move to move his bishop back here. I was hoping at some point that I was be able to do something like this. And, like, obviously this isn't right, but 
take the night or something, but it never happened. Or maybe some kind of discovery with like a check on h7 with the bishop leaving the queen to take the queen. But again, never happened. So this move, I'm not sure why he played I, this move. Maybe he was worried about push. Like, let's say he goes here, push. I mean, I understand it takes, I take with check. And this pawn's undefended, so. Oh. But I've got two attackers on it. That's why. I, I wouldn't have found that, probably. So. Yeah, but what if I, okay, back to this one, what if he just pushes either one? If he pushes here, this pawn's undefended. If he pushes here, I take with check. Uh, what? Is that not legal? I don't know what's going on. That should be legal. Whatever. So this might have been forced. So this is a good, there's a little bit of a move order thing happening here. And considering what happened, I'm glad I played the knight over, because this was a really nice defensive move to get in. Obviously he threatens checkmate on g2, but I didn't see this. So the other option that could have happened was takes, takes. And then something like this. But in this variation, he doesn't have double pawns, and he can play a rook to the d-file. I suppose I can play here. And if he wants to really try for the d-file, he can go for this. I guess I'm a little bit stuck here. So it's still worse than what happened in the game, which was after all these exchanges, I get the D file, he's got a double pawn. This was a nice move to protect the D7 square. If I had gotten a rook in here, it would have been a much bigger advantage. So he tries to contest the D file, which I thought I was going to win. So again, here I have some more options, but what actually happened was that he takes, I didn't see this coming, because I have to take otherwise, yeah, I have to take this way, I can't take the, um, yeah. And so here I had the decision of, I could have done this, but then he gets this in, and no matter what I try, he's coming in. So that was probably losing. So it's still a very slight advantage for me here. But I wanted to go back to where? I wonder if I had played this right away. And then here. This might have been even better, except, no, <clears throat> I'm not sure, I don't like it as much as what actually happened. 
So here I had another option to do a few things. I could have taken and played for this. I think it all transposes to the same thing. So nothing doing there. I could have also played this. No, I can't. Because he's threatening, the whole thing was he was threatening to take this e5 pawn twice. So obviously I'm not going to try to protect it with my rook. So it all worked out to be basically the same. And then we get to this position. I went for this funky stuff. So here, like I was saying before, I thought I had, this was a blender. It probably is on this variation. So where should he move? There's only two options. Well, yeah. You could do this. This would have been kind of weird. I'm not sure who's better here. Because, I mean... Actually, I've got to be better because his king can't even come and cook out my... Well, he, it can. Let's just say... Something like this. Then he goes here. But then I go here. And we could repeat. Or I could go back here. And it's the same problem. Yeah. This doesn't work. So probably I'd have the edge still in this variation. Let's see what it looks like. Without the rooks. Here, I'm not sh It's all probably, this is probably a draw. It's hard to say, but that'd be my guess. It's probably like you have to count tempos and stuff. Not going to do that. I've probably taken too long, anyways. But the way it worked out, I decided to go for this, which I think is good. His rook doesn't have much to do. So, okay. Obviously that was a bad move, but what should he do? <clears throat> Let's try bringing the king over. That's not going to work, is it? And then he runs out of tempos. So he tries to come over here take these guys. But I should win, right? Yeah, I win. If instead... I 
still win. So can't march with the king. He could try this. But, I mean, are there any good moves? Yeah, I think this is a win. <clears throat> so we'll see. We'll see with the computer. Let's get the computer eval going. Um, sorry, request a computer analysis. Let's take a little bit. Time. Should mention that now it's 17 to 19, so moving up. Wow. It says I played with six average senti pawn loss. So that's basically the. Oh, no, it's not done. <laughs> I was going to say that's the best game of chess I ever played. Um. But it does appear that I was really never behind and didn't really have any chances to lose, so that's good news. Um, still, 12 average set pawn loss. It still might be like one of the best games I've played. Um, one inaccuracy, one mistake. And share played with three inaccuracies, one blunder, 37 average set pawn loss. Relatively clean game, like I was saying. Definitely some luck involved there for me. Now, I've talked about all this, so we're not really going to go through in too much detail. I'm just looking. At this point, it's been saying I've got like a plus 9, plus 8 advantage. Really, the computer is saying this move is better. But what about this? Oh, I don't have to take... I could just retreat. Something like, oh, this is good for me. Two nasty center pawns. And the computer's actual suggestion. Whoa. Oh, it's this one. is to maintain the tension and it's still fine for both sides so the computer proves with my pawn takes now this would have been interesting now if we reached this right here. I think I wouldn't have been so happy with this. But, yeah, okay. I just say, fine. I'm gonna run. And he just hangs out here. Of course, I can't, this is no longer a threat because it's checkmate. So it becomes a little weird, and probably this is a good way for Cher to continue. The computer thinks this is better. I see. Because considering how trapped the knight is, and how, how this pawn's going to stay here forever, that bishop was doing nothing, so it's actually better for him to have the knights. Makes sense. So yeah, it definitely likes me here. So the computer says, defend e6 with the knight, which gets rid of your bad knight problem. And a 
okay, so there's weird things here, but in this variation there's no light squared bishop attacking uh, g6 at least. There's a lot of stuff going on, obviously. I'm trying to cover a lot of it, so this is going to be a really long video. Interesting that the computer thought this was a better try. I wonder why. Bishop e4, huh? Probably it keeps queens on the board. But what about this? Hmm. Okay. So here, this is a I like that as a defensive move, but I guess I had nothing to worry about. And could have just kept the queens on the board. I wanted to get the queens off the board, though, because I liked my general slight advantage on this d-file and with this pawn. Hard to say. I think it's still a pretty good idea for me. The computer agrees that I'm, like, barely better. Peter's saying, for some reason, to offload his doubled pawn. Not sure why. But probably this whole... Th yeah, this pretty much takes away my <coughs> entire <coughs> advantage, and it's just pretty much drawish this whole way through. So let's just, yeah, the computer says <coughs> either move is fine. I just didn't see that taking would have come with check. Yeah, this is kind of annoying. <clears throat> that basically, since these pawns are so far apart, he's able to get to g1, <clears throat> and through g1, get to g2, which holds my king to this pawn, and holds my rook to this pawn. So all I can do is move these three pawns. So he probably, I won't, he maybe. <coughs> Luckily for me, his king cannot get over to help these three uh, A, B, and C pawns. Otherwise, he might be winning. And the other variation was this one. I was going to do this. It's just a chance, basically just make, have me make this one move. Same idea. Okay. <clears throat> Luckily I had this move. I didn't see it until I had to. How is this good? I thought if this happens I go here. he's threatening h2 to either win the rook or the b-pawn. And I can't move down because then he goes here. But what about this? Yeah, I could do this. But now my king's far away compared to what happened in the game, which is just basically a bunch of moving pawns, and then moving my king to the center, and my king slightly ahead of his. 
Really? This is a draw? I thought I calculated this for a win. Wow, I did not see this. This is pretty nice. Really? You don't even take this? hard to say. But that's the only move, right? Yeah. So what about like this? So in this variation, I get the queen first, but I'm one pawn down. Okay. So yeah, I guess it's probably a draw, but it's still the whole game a little harder for him. So overall, good game. So thanks for anyone who stuck with me through all that. It's really long analysis, but I think I learned a lot at least. So see you later.